Hello. In this video, I'll continue to develop the hypoid geometry by creating the procedural metal elements. So to do this, I'm going to add another blast here on the right. And this time I'm going to select the uh, metal tag. Again, we're not going to switch that to delete unselected so that it deletes the stone area and we are left with the geometry of the metal tag. I want to remesh this using the remesh to grid. And I want to remesh it with the same values that we're here using here on the remesh grid for the stone. So to always make sure that's always uh, the set of the same values, I'm going to copy the parameter that's on the uh, first remesh grid from the stone and then paste that into uh, paste relative reference into the division size on the remesh grid for our metal. So now those values will always match. Now I just want to expand this a little bit. You can see we've got some um, quite small areas here on the text. So I'm just going to uh, dilate it slightly with just a very small value. So a value of 0 0.005. And just as I did before on this side, I'm going to use some mountain uh, nodes, some attribute noises to add um, some detail. But I'm also going to do the same trick I did before to avoid any kind of um, intersections. I'm going to add a normal node, sort that two points, add an attribute blur. And then blur the normal attribute. Increase the blurring iterations to 100. So that's blurred the normals. So now when I add this uh, attribute noise, this uh, mountain node, we should get some nicer displacement around the kind of edges and uh, cavity areas of the geometry and avoid intersection. This is currently uh, displacing way too much. So let's just turn this way down. Let's try 0 0.001. And I want this metal to look as if it's been hammered into shape and by some kind of blacksmith. So I'm going to change the noise type to this Warly cellular. And then decrease the element size. Maybe a bit too small. Let's try 0 0.02. Let's increase this amplitude slightly. Let's try 0 0.01. Currently you can see um, I'm dealing with very small values on this element size. So to help with that, I'm just going to click this uh, XYZ button. And this will give me some extra options for changing the scale in uh, independently in the X, Y, and Z. But what I'm going to do is change this to 0 0.05, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. And now I can increase this slider. And now I can just adjust this more more easily uh, and now no longer dealing with uh, such small values. I'm also going to increase the roughness a little bit and just decrease this amplitude noise a little bit. There we go, I think that's going to work. So I've settled on an amplitude of um, 0 0.008, element size is set to 2 and then the element scale is set to 0 0.05 in all three axes and the roughness under fractal is set 2.6. And if I just disable this attribute blur, you can see how that's helping uh, kind of avoid these kind of nasty uh, intersections and uh, displacement around on this very small text areas. Next, I'm going to add a mesh sharpen, which is another node from Side Effects Labs. And what this node does is kind of sharpens the geometry and just pulls any kind of corners and edges to get together to give this kind of sharpening look. It's obviously quite extreme at the moment. So let's reduce this step size to something much smaller. Let's try 0 0.05 and then decrease the iterations. Let's try and increase the smoothing iterations. So that just stylizes that noise a little bit, little bit more. Um, 
I think that's quite noticeable that it's this uh, cellular noise. It's quite recognisable. I think just sharpening it just takes the edge off a little bit and makes, makes it look a little bit more natural. Next, after the sharpen node, I'm going to add another remesh grid. And again, I just want to always make sure it matches this remesh grid that we used on the stone. So I'm going to copy that parameter, come over to the remesh grid, uh, and under the division size, I'm just going to delete that 0 0.0 value and paste relative reference. So that will just always ensure that if I ever change this size under the remesh grid for the stone, I'm always going to end up with the same result here on the right with the metal. And now I'm going to add under here an attribute wrangle. And I'm going to type at CD equals zero. So that we have a color attribute that is set to black and then add at CD dot B for the blue channel is equal to one. So now we have this blue color on the metal. And I'm now ready to merge these two together. In the next video, I will do some optimization using a polyreduce and demonstrate a fast way of generating UVs on high poly geometry.